I hope you bastards are ready. Alright, well since my computer can't handle shit, my name's Aaron Ciotti, everybody calls me Ciotti. I'm at T-Pain today! <laughs> and uh, him and I have been texting for the past, like, hour. So, this is a world, weird world that I live in. Um, for the record, homeboy can drive! <laughs> um, T-Pain has a little drift team here in Georgia, that, um, and he drifts himself. And yeah, he's a great driver. Like, I did not expect him to be nearly as good as he is. I was blown away. He's, like, legit. Um, I was into drifting, like, 20-ish years ago for a few years. And I, I got nowhere near as good as, as, as where he's at. Um, this was before I dove into autocross and road race and all that fun stuff. But um, amazing, 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 super cool dude, too. Um, if you haven't seen him on uh, NPR's Tiny Desk Concerts, go now. Um, go to go search for T-Pain NPR Tiny Desk or just T-Pain NPR um, yeah amazing down to earth super cool human being and um, yeah meet your heroes yo meet them uh, thanks for coming everybody today was a weird day 3 o'clock stream got pushed to 9 o'clock here because I was uh, meeting T-Pain um, who we got in here? BS Zero Man was first, then came the... Well, maybe not first. Uh, I showed up late, so... In theory. BS Zero Man was first, The Bros was next, Eric Allen FPV, Rob Axis, and Carbon Cage FPV is here from Down Under, Jonathan King is here, Free Lojo, Tiago Ramos, uh, B-Man 80 in the house, Rob Axis and BS Zero Man again, Spud Nick, Free Lojo, Rob Axis and Tiago again... Scroll, 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 scroll. Frank Nicholas is here. What's up, Frank? Uh, Spudnik is here. Stuck in Trees is here. Iza Does It is here. Ken Hill. Uh, Eric Allen in the house. Ken Hill again. Nathaniel LaBeouf. Private Line FPV. T-Bird FPV. And there's Eric Allen again. Uh, as you guys have already seen these wonderful folks doing, if you at me in the chat, that's how you can talk directly to me. If you don't at tag me, I will assume that you guys are talking to each other. Um, we call ourselves The Collective. We are a big old group of nerds who fix all the FPV problems. <laughs> I'm not necessarily the smartest guy in the room. I'm just the guy with the camera pointed at him. Um, so we all work together to keep each other in the air and uh, motivated and, uh, yeah, all the good things. Uh, I haven't called it out in a while, but FPV Therapy is a group over on Facebook that I started, uh, hell, almost a year ago, I guess. Um, if you know anybody who has mental illness struggles or you just find yourself getting sad for no reason, I think I just blew a spit bubble. That was kind of gross. Uh, yeah, come on over, learn something, read something. Uh, we're telling our stories. We're trying to help each other out, um, navigate the wide and not wonderful at all world of mental illness so come on over fpv space therapy on facebook come on in um read our stories and uh yeah we'll hopefully help you out uh in the chat i've been tagged by b man he said what's up rob Axison said no instagram here only insta 360 go if you guys don't believe me about t-pain go over to instagram siati fpv on instagram siati fpv everywhere um friend me like me do whatever you'd like uh, but yeah, head on over to Instagram if you don't believe me. Uh, I, I, I was, I was really hoping to watch some of this footage, but it's apparently all in 
120 frame a second uh, GX. I thought I was at 60 frames, but it's it's not going to play. Um, so yeah, I'm going to review footage though this week uh, to do. Uh, I, I want to do him an edit specifically, and um, I, so he's got a new album coming out. And when I asked him what song he wants on the edit that I'm going to do for him, he said, oh, I'll just send you one of my new ones. <laughs> and I almost crashed the goddamn car. Um, so yeah, crazy things, crazy world. Uh, Sunday Night Giveaway. These are excellent little uh, M4. You have to have M4 gimbals. So QX7 with M9 gimbals these won't work on because the threads are M3. Uh, so if you have a radio that has M4 threads on it, on the sticks, and you like black nubbins, and you like black nipples, um, these could be for you. Message me, Ciotti FPV, on Facebook if you would like them, and uh, tell me what transmitter you have because I'll make sure that they're going to work, and I'll send them to you with a sticker. What do you think of that? First person to Facebook message me wins. Uh, Rob Axelson said, you are a bad influence. He crashed three, rig, three rigs in two days and spent all day today doing repairs. And to that I say, welcome to my world, my friend. Um, in my opinion, we should all be following that same sequence of crash many things in not a lot of time and then spend days and days and days fixing them. It's one of the coolest parts about our hobby is that we can just smash the shit out of our, our pride and joys and then just easily fix them in the comfort of our own homes. Race cars is much more annoying. Smash it, and then it's way more expensive to fix it. You gotta fix it in a hot-ass garage. You gotta fucking bash your hands all up. You get all dirty. It's horrible. It's horrible. I miss it so bad, though. Um, but, yeah, love it. And, um, oh, thanks for that, Tyler. Tyler Sherrard, uh, I'm not going to put him on blast, but put him on blast, as they say. Um, so yeah, at tag me in the chat, or if you just type CID FPV with no spaces, um, it'll, it'll light up an orange for me, and I know you'll be talking to me. Uh, this is going to be a short stream. I think I'm going to chop this at 10 o'clock, so we got about 50 minutes. Uh, I have not eaten all day. Uh, I look kind of bright. Why am I so, am I brighter than normal? Okay. That's not the right button. Let me do that. Yeah, that looks a little better. Let me go down one more. All right. Yeah, that looks better. Um, in case anybody wants to see the shirt. All right. And Tiago says, uh, you did it and, uh, you did it. And I just saw, I wasn't following you on it. Tiago. <laughs> Tiago wasn't even following me on Instagram. He's a moderator. <laughs> I don't know. I can't come up with any jokes, but... Uh, you got jokes? Uh, Isa does it, says what's up. And then we've got Private Island. Oh, come on, YouTube. Private Island says... Oh, Private Island came over from Stu's stream. Very cool. Uh, T-Bird FPV says, what's up? Glad to see you smiling again. Thanks, thanks, T-Bird. I got a lot to smile about right now. Um, Eric Allen says, how you doing? I'm doing good right now. Solo FPV says, what's good? Rob Oxison says, Trav at UIV Futures could use a hand as depression is uh, hitting him hard. Um, Trevor... Dr Grumpy Trev? Um, tell me more, Rob. Uh, let's get him in the, uh, let's get him in the, uh, the, 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 let's get him in the Facebook group. Eric Allen FPV says, my trip to Speedy Turtle FPV was awesome. He's a great guy, uh, with an awesome place to rip. Haven't had much motivation to get out and fly, but this trip reinvigorated my love for flying. Um, that is fucking awesome, Eric. Uh, this weekend, if I'm totally honest, kind of reinvigorated me. Um, I hadn't flown in a while. I hadn't flown in a few weeks uh, a lot of stuff to do around here. I've been trying to focus on editing. Um, got that, uh, drift edit done from now three events ago. Uh, so check that out. Click my name down here. No, down here. If you haven't seen that edit yet, I think you're going to like it. Everybody has been flipping the fuck out about it. Um... What else we got? What else we got? Airbender says, what's up? All right, and I think I'm caught up on the chat. 
Um, yeah, what's uh, d- does anybody have a um, does anybody have a line to to Stu? I don't I don't really have a way of talking to him. I, I've never really talked to him before, um, and I doubt that he knows about me. So I'll just be uh, uh, some guy. Um, if, if any of you guys have a, have a, an in to Stu or, or it sounds like Grumpy Trev, um, yeah, let me know. Let's, uh, let's get him into FPV therapy on Facebook and, um, yeah, I would just love to talk to him. Uh, all right. What else we got going on? Nothing. What did I say I was going to do here? Building two five inch rigs. Well, that shit ain't going to happen. Let's just, uh, let's just, let's just fix that fucking title right now late night sunday q a dash i fucking met t pain no that's that's too much uh uh gushing about meeting t pain there we go uh no gushing is a weird word gushing has a weird weirdness uh, doing things. Doing things. That's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with doing things. Uh, what about your duo, Airbender? Um, it's here. I haven't, uh, I haven't looked at it since the other night, but I will. Uh, yeah, yesterday and today were absolute chaos. Um, I literally, yesterday and today, I woke up, I ate a little bit, threw the rest of my shit in a bag, and just drove directly out to the, uh, to the drift event. Got home last night at, like, midnight ish uh worked on a little bit of the footage got a quick little I, I wanted to get something up for you guys today at three um so i just got a super quick little edit for you guys up today at three um and then uh and then yeah this and then went to sleep woke up today and just did the exact same thing throw my shit in a bag my poor lovely wife is is like eh, i guess it's not a weekend <laughs> Uh, Bman80 says, "Why late tonight?" Which I just inadvertently answered. Uh, Rob Oxen says, "I got a question. Crash my, I crashed my quad and now it won't fly. What's wrong with it?" Uh, Rob, it's the uh, it's the muffler bearings. Check the uh, the muffler bearings. You'll you'll it'll get you fixed right up. Private On says, "For some reason, I thought you'd be streaming from the road." Yeah, I thought I might be too, but I got out of there uh, quick enough. Oh, hey, I also did a whole bunch. Maybe that'll play. Um, I did a whole bunch of uh, cine whooping with both uh, both cine whoop rigs, the uh, the Acrobrat with the Stan FPV ducts and the Insta360 Go on it, as well as the Cinesplore, uh, the FPV Cycle Cinesplore uh, with the Hero 7 on it. So I should have some really, really good B-roll um, flying around the pits, going through people's windows. Um, yeah, I, really, really uh, excited to... to to use that stuff. I don't, I usually forget to, to film B roll stuff. Um, when you have it, it's so handy. Um, and when you don't have it, you wish you had it. Uh, Paul Green Taylor says, Good budget VTX for TBS Source One. Paul, I'm a huge Immersion RC Tramp fan. Uh, they are $30, and Joshua's, uh, Joshua Bardwell's uh, VTX testing that Trappy made him take down because he freaked out and said that he wasn't using an expensive enough tester basically um but the tester that joshua bardwell was using which is immersion's little tester um that little tester got tested at a facility with the big expensive equipment and they said yeah this thing's great it works really really well you could have just used this um and so yeah in in joshua's testing with that little immersion RF meter um, that this lab certified is great. Uh, the Tramp outperformed the Unifies up in the higher race band channels. Race band like 5, 6, 7, and 8. Uh, the Immersion RC $30 Tramp uh, outperformed the 40 slash $50 Unifies. So how about that? And I've always run high race band channels, so that's why I've always done Tramps. Um, but it, it did help that they were... 10 to 20 bucks less. Um, so that's my suggestion for you, man. Uh, tramps have treated me very, very well. I have, like, physically obliterated them. But I just, 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 just finally had my first one um, just kind of, like, lose power and, and just die. 
Um, but I've been flying them for like two years, so pretty damn good. Um, r uh, damn, Airbender FPV with a $50 super chat. I guess we're taking a look at his quad. <laughs> So I don't do this for everybody, um, but I don't know. I, I, I love acrobats, and um, uh, yeah, I um, uh, I just told Sean. Sean had, had asked me uh, uh, to help him troubleshoot this, and I, I remember that he'd been having trouble with it for a while. Um, and the the uh, the symptoms that he was describing. Uh, I kind of, I was kind of like, man, this is going to be a nightmare to troubleshoot, like, through the internet. Um, so I was like, dude, just send me it, and, uh, and it'll be a good, uh, it'll be a good thing to kind of look at on the stream. Uh, so, yeah, that's this. Dude, thank you so much. Super generous, super chat. Um, Stuck in Trees uses the RDQ Mach 3. I used those for a little bit. Uh, what I found is that they just didn't really hold up. Like, they would slowly... Um, they would slowly get, like, worse and worse and worse, and then eventually they would be so bad that, like, it was almost like they were, um, it was almost like they were on 25 milliwatts all the time. Um, and that's what this Tramp finally did, but again, I, I've been running Tramps for a long time. The, the RDQ, uh, uh, VTXs, they were doing that within, like, a few weeks. Um, yeah, I think I had three of them that did that, and I just said to hell with it and moved on. Um, they're made by AKK. I've never really had any luck with AKK VTXs, so I guess it makes sense. Um, but yeah, Tramp, uh, Immersion RC Tramp, 30 bucks. That's my, uh, that's the best VTX I've found. Um, all right, so the first thing that I noticed when this rig showed up, um, is that, so the new, so Sean, uh, came from the V1 Acrobrat, uh, and on the V1 Acrobrat, these little grommets in between the clean and the dirty sections, um, these grommets were like uh, omnidirectional. I, I don't know. You could you couldn't put them in wrong. Um, they, they were they were the same on the inside as, as they were on the outside. Um, but on the duo, th they're not like that. And you know we don't really get instruction manuals for any of our stuff. So um, that was the first thing I noticed were, were that these grommets were backwards. Um, Sean was like, yeah, I, I had a feeling they were a little bit too loose in there. So um, he kind of already knew that. But basically, so what this rig is doing is, is um, fixing the grommets has it airworthy, which is nice. But when you, uh, when you fly it, you can hear a, um, like a glitchiness and a, um, it's, it sounds very smooth. And then it's, it's, uh, so Sean called it grindiness. It's, it's. It's always hard to to have like a common vocabulary for this shit, um, but I, I wouldn't necessarily call it uh, a grindiness, but he did, so you guys might. Um, I would call it more of like a twitchiness. Um, basically, so it's hovering and going brrrr, and then it just goes like brrrr, and it, it's just not smooth. When when you're hovering a rig. It just should be smooth. Like, there's no stress being put on it. So, like, if you hover a rig and it's not perfectly smooth, land it and disarm it. Because that that lack of smoothness is typically the motors trying to go the opposite direction. Like, the, the gyro is getting freaked out or there's some other problem. And the motors are literally trying to go the other direction. That's where a lot of that noise is coming from. And that makes them get really hot, right? It's really hard to do. If, if you're spinning in one direction at full stank, well, not full stank, but, you know, you're spinning one direction really good, and then the computer tells you, no, 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 go the other way, and then, no, 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 no go back the other way. Um, so that's what we're trying to figure out on this. Um, like I said, it got a lot better from uh, putting the uh, these grommets in correctly, but it's still not quite there. So... Um, my troubleshoot on this, because we're, what I think it is, is I think they're, um, and, and typically what it is when that happens is that there's too many, there, there are too many vibes getting into the gyro. Um, that could be caused by a couple things here. Um, the, the, one of the things that I'm suspect about is that he's got the Hobbywing F4 flight controller 
pretty much hard mounted, not fully hard mounted. There's rubber above and below, but Hobbywing unfortunately drills these F4s to be M2. Um, and when you drill something to be M2, you don't give any of us an ability to properly soft mount it. So it's, it's really kind of Hobbywing's fault, but um, he did say that this flight controller was okay previously. Um, so in theory, the flight controller is not the problem, but I, I've had, I, I've had some weird experiences with, um, with the Hobbywing F4. So I'm still not totally sold that the, um, that the flight controller is not the issue, but we will press on and, and we're going to look for other, uh, we're going to look for other issues because mainly because, uh, Sean said to me that it uh, this flight controller has worked, and um, I didn't ask him, but I, I, I'm assuming he would have told me if like it worked, and then he smashed it into a brick wall at 7,000 miles an hour. Um, so I'm just kind of assuming that that's not the case. Uh, if it is, then I'm pretty much going to stop working on this and just blame the flight controller. <laughs> Um, because yeah, I mean, if, if you get, if you take a big slam and all of a sudden your rig's not working right, it's not the pid tune. It's something that got physically fucked up in the crash. And if you try to fix that with the pid tune, um, you're going to ruin your pid tune and, uh, have something that flies like a bag of assholes. When instead, what you should have done is, is fix whatever the problem is. You know, maybe you bent a motor shaft. Um, maybe the gyro... Uh, the gyros are kind of fragile. I mean, they, they got little fingers in there, and they move all around and shit. Um, all hardware is brand new. So the, the motors are definitely fine. We spun the motors up, and they're beautifully clean. Um, these T-Motor uh, 1507s are known to be smooth enough motors. Um, so those are definitely not the problem. Uh, we've got a, I, I keep forgetting, we've got a, a VTX on the top plate here. Um, I, mean, I, I guess, like, maybe, 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 maybe the VTX being on the top plate right above the flight controller is like, uh, that, that, that shouldn't be it. Um, so everything's this is nice and tight um this seems tight i mean there is like there is a little bit of a bundle of wires in the back here but acrobats always have that mine mine has that as well um but it's something that does need to be kind of looked at here um Here's the long and short of it, though. Even, like, like this bundle of wires, I don't care about it because the gyro is here. This this is the gyro right here. And this is the issue, in, in my opinion. I, I'm pretty sure that the that the gyro um, is is just, like, kind of getting upset. It is, is a, you know, like, it, it's just getting too much either physical shaking or could be electronic. I mean, I don't know. There's so many things that fuck up on these these rigs. It's 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 so hard to, to troubleshoot. It's it's why you really need to troubleshoot like kind of one thing at a time. Um, uh, and thus far on this rig, I've troubleshot the grommets, the motors. I spun those guys up, um, and. Uh, I went through Betaflight and I made sure nothing was wrong in Betaflight. I, I did add a little bit of extra filtering. Um, that didn't seem to help. Uh, now what I'm doing is just, just kind of making sure that these are, these wires are all run in a way that they're not like. The other thing I'm wondering is like, are is is there a wire that's vibrating into the flight controller? Now that that is something that could definitely cause these issues is that you've got a wire that's like and, and I, I I moved some of these wires around already but like for example right you see this see this little bundle of wires here see how it's nice and f it's it's nice and far away hold on 
All right, so when this thing is together, this bundle of wires is plenty far away. If this bundle of wires was like down there like that, where it, it, it could be bouncing up and down, that's enough. This little tiny bit of vibration is enough to give this to make this gyro go, what the fuck is happening? Um, so, yeah, you got to be really careful about that. Um, usually, th this is why I'll typically uh, cram wires below the flight controller, in between the flight controller and the ESC, because usually that'll be enough to kind of push the, to either, um, yeah, to just kind of have the wires in a spot where they're either pushed against the flight controller or they're far enough away um, so that they're not like just kind of dangling in there, bouncing into it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna kind of fuck around with this and get these pushed down. Uh, how much time we got? I'm so hungry. All right, another half an hour. Good, we, we're good on time. Uh, okay, so I moved some of these wires out of the way. I don't see anything that kind of jumps out at me. Let's do this. I have charged batteries. I am bound to this. Uh, I'm going to test hover this. We're going to see if, because it might be better. Um, it, it might already be fixed. I doubt it, but uh, let's take a look. And if it's not, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, at that point, I'm going to have to start pulling it apart. Um, and I'm not necessarily going to do that here tonight. Uh, but you guys will at least have seen round two slash three of the troubleshoot on this. Um, I did the, I did this. This is not Sean doing this. This is me just, th this was, uh, uh, zip tied to the back standoff here. And I try to not do that because the back standoff comes really close to the bottom plate when the uh, the clean and dirty plates compress. Um, so I always try to keep everything zip tied to the second to last um, standoff here. All right, so we got that. Let's put this last camera screw in. And let's see if moving wires around will have uh, had any effect. I'm just going to tuck this in with the... Uh, with the battery, I think. Any, uh, any, so do, do you guys listen to T-Pain? Are there any uh, actual T-Pain fans out there, or is it just me? Um, like I said, if you haven't seen him on NPR's Tiny Desk, go. And Hot Ones. Go. Oh, fuck me! And Hot Ones! He was hysterical on Hot Ones, too. Oh, he was really good on Hot Ones. Not quite as good as, uh, 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 Kevin Hart. Uh, but still plenty good. Oh, the other thing I did, uh, Sean had one huge piece of umma grip up here, uh, and what can happen when you do that is the battery can sit on the umma grip and like wiggle around and create vibrations. So it's actually kind of important if you guys have acrobrats, only run a little piece of the umma grip. You want to pull the battery into these side rails. You need you actually kind of need to pull the battery into these these carbon side rails because you need the battery to be fully like stiff on this top plate. The battery can't be in here wiggling around. So cut, only use a small bit, and then always crank your, uh, your, uh, your Acrobrat straps down um, more than you think you would ever need. Because, yeah, it can totally be a problem. I've seen that before, and apparently this, I, I've also heard that this Acrobrat Duo frame has a resonance at 500 megahertz, uh, so that's something, next time I plug it into the computer, uh, that's something that I'm going to see if I can see what the hell's going on with. Um, I just want this antenna to be out of the way, so I'm just going to do a little janky puss here, a little janky move. All right, what's that? Oh. French fry, French fry delivery. Oh, that's a good fucking French fry, bro. Where's the uh, transmitter? Oh, she got Popeyes. Nothing is open on Sunday night. I forgot Sunday. Did you get me anything? Oh, we have a whole. Oh, she even got me something, guys. Oh. All right, here we go. 
Now's the moment. What is this? Oh, it's the arm of this chair. <laughs> that was weird. Couldn't figure out what that was. Oh, there's no props on it. God damn it. All right, hold on. Let me zip a set of props on here real quick. Uh, that'll give me a chance to get caught up on the chat. I see you guys going orange. I see you guys going orange. Remember...諦めんなよ。諦めんなお前。どうしてそこで謝るんだ、そこで。もう少し頑張ってみろよ。ダイナムだね、目開けたら。周りのことを思うよ。応援する人たちのことを思ってるのって。あともうちょっと男なんだ
and you can even see it. You can see it losing power. That's it trying to spin the motors the opposite direction because it's getting confused and angry. And, um, and when that happens, the motors will get really hot. That was a hot motor. Uh, so, problem still exists. Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, I have to uh, pull this thing down to, like, nothing. Because um, I've, I've kind of checked all of... The, and now I know how to use Hellgate beepers. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, at this point, I have to tear this thing apart. And I probably won't have to go as far as, like, desoldering stuff. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, it, it just it needs to get disassembled to try to figure out what the hell's going on. I mean, the the other the other option is just to say, well, the flight controller's fucked and put another flight controller in it. But um, what sucks is when you do that and it doesn't fix it, um, and it almost sounds like it doesn't black box. So that's the other big problem with Hobby Wings flight controllers is that they don't fucking have black box, um, and that was. That was one of the things that made the Hobby Wing F4 a real pain in the ass for me, is that I couldn't black box it. Um, so, yeah. Uh, all right, scrolling back up because YouTube did the thing. Robaxon says, new t-shirt flies like a bag of assholes. Crunk says, how are those hard TPU feet holding up on the BQE thing? They're holding up good. I haven't built it yet. Uh uh, then Rob says, why is it I type a bad name and it doesn't post? Really? No, I, I definitely don't have cursing turned off. Um, wow, that's really aggravating. I would, I would like to turn that back on. Try to curse, guys. Say fuck, fuck, fuck. See what happens. Uh, B-Man says, remember, this PC don't like running that shit. Uh, and then he says, your PC always gives up on Clam <laughs> It does. Clam Man is too difficult. j -Bo says, did you go to the Drift event today? I certainly did, j -Bo, and I talked to T-Pain for about 15 minutes, and then we've been texting back and forth ever since. Um, rewind to the, the beginning of this stream for the whole story. Um, Tiago says, isn't the top plate bumping the cables that touch the flight controller? It looks tight. Yeah, I think we already kind of talked about that. Um... Scrolling back down, scroll, 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 and Frank Nicholas says reset slash flash beta flight to defaults to see if the problem still persists. That's a really good idea. When was the last time you did that, Sean? Because if you just did that, I might not do it. But it's oh, see, you guys can curse. Weird. Why is it? Who is it not letting curse? Um, uh, Frank says for all your logging needs, yeah, there's the, um, there's the, you can do an external logger. What a pain in the ass, though. Uh, via serial, spark fun, open log, or I must have 16.8.32. I think there's a, um, yeah, I have it set to live chat. Um, strange. So, uh, gyro filtering is actually turned off. Uh, gyro filtering off and then back on uh, made no difference. Um, Drone pilot says he can see his own cursing. Uh, yeah, I mean the the uh, troubleshooting this in beta flight uh, is just it kind of goes back to that same thing where like the hardware is like this hardware, these motors, these props this frame um, should be able to fly, I have one that does, um, perfectly fine on defaults. So going into like the filtering and going all crazy, changing the filtering all over the place, um, in my opinion, is, is just not, um, yeah, it, it's just not the right path. There, there's, this combination of parts should work, so there's something about either the way it's built or you know what I'm saying like there, there's something that needs to be fixed on the hardware because by going crazy in the tune to try to tune this bullshit out the tune's going to be horrible probably not not for sure but um, there's a good chance the tune is going to be really bad um, if 
we're we're trying to let me, let me do one thing though. Let me let me drop a notch filter on 500 just to make sure that it's not um it's not going to be that for the record, but it's uh it's not it's also not going to hurt. So, let's do this really quick. And we're just going to come in here and put this right on 500. And so 500's the center. I haven't put a notch filter on in a while. Notch filter has a center and a cutoff. Filter is symmetrical. Center frequency is the center. The filter cutoff frequency is where the notch starts. That's what I need to look up, where it starts. For example, with a notch cutoff of 160. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I want this to be fairly targeted, so let's start it at 480. So we're gonna, this is the center frequency here, 500, and then we're gonna start the notch at 480. So this notch filter is gonna go from 480 to 520, right? That's how it works. You set your center, you set your outside, and then it, yeah, it goes the other way. Uh, it's not gonna, like I said, it's not gonna do anything. But um, and the I I did turn the gyro filters back on, uh, but I turned them up nice and high because the gyro filters do very little. Um, like I'm tempted to to bring these dynamic notch filter settings back up to default, but again, this frame can fly with these set like this. Like I I don't I don't again I don't want to cripple the tune. Uh, Krunk says he can tune this in minutes. Krunk, what's your address? I'll send it to you. Um, because it's not a tuning issue. Um, it's a, it's a mechanical issue for sure. Um, but if you could tune through a mechanical issue and still have it fly good, I'd be pretty fucking impressed, bro. Um, but that's not the case here. This, uh, this can't be tuned out. This is not a, a tune issue. Uh, in my, in my opinion, which, you know, could be worth something. I've been around a minute. Let's see what it does. I mean, let's just marvel in how little it does, but, um, yeah, let's see what it does. Eee, come on. There we go. And... Make sure I have the uh Jesus easy. The squad has a Hellgate and I didn't realize that you can wire I mean it makes sense, you can wire the Hellgates up as a regular beeper. That's kind of cool. Nah. Well, now it's nice and clean, but it, it was just doing it a second ago. Yeah, you hear it? Oh, God. What was that? That was a weird noise. Uh, let's see how hot the motors are. I mean, that, the, it, it was still doing it. It was still doing it. Oh, Crunk legit wants me to send it to him. Okay. I'm done. Sean, are you cool with that? You want Crunk to work on it for you? I am down with that. I got lots going on. Eh. Oh, wait. No, I got to plug this back in. How hot are they? They're hot. They're not that hot. Hey. Um. All right. So, yeah, that's uh, frustrating, but get to the bottom of it. Get to the bottom of it, man. I mean, the, the, big, the big thing to remember with this troubleshoot here, uh, in my opinion, is that the frame is fine and the motors are fine. Um, the flight controller being hard mounted is eh, kind of concerning. Um, but yeah, these motors are plenty smooth and uh, this frame is strong enough to produce a rig that doesn't need to be crip that you know that doesn't need to be uh, to be attacked 
with wacky filtering and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I just I try to not do that unless I absolutely have to. Hmm. Oh, I know how I can soft mount this flight controller a little bit. All right, so I have a I have a plan for that. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that uh, flight controller up on um, up on rubber uh, M2 up on rubber M2 standoffs. These little guys, and uh, that'll give it a little bit more soft. Well, I mean that'll give it some soft mounting, and uh, yeah, that will tell whether or not the um that'll tell us whether or not it's a uh, yeah that hard mounting is is the problem because again we're you, to, to some extent you gotta kind of uh take it one thing at a time uh so yeah these little guys they make these little guys in m2 for the record unless you have to don't use these these only squish uh, front, back, left, and right, they don't squish up and down. So the, the grommets uh, in the flight controller are a much better bet. But again, this particular flight controller is drilled M2. So there's not, you can't do any grommeting. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try uh, four of these little guys to see if uh, that'll be my next uh, step on the troubleshoot. All right. So let me actually, to remind myself, I'm going to throw four of them out there. One, two, three, four. All right, the fun continues. Uh, just not right now. I'm going uh, to work on this tomorrow because we only got ten minutes left, and I'm hungry as hell, uh, and I might even bail before the ten minutes are up, to be honest with you guys. Um, chat, what's going on? Uh... Where we at? 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 Uh, Crunk says turn dynamic low pass one filter off, low pass two filter off. So that's what I've already done. Uh, low pass filter one static equals 300. I had it at 500. I, I could try it at 300. Uh, RPM filtering okay. Dynamic notch eight 200, 90, 400. Tried that as well. I had the dynamic notch turned down. It didn't do anything. Um, notch will not help here. D term 1.5. All right, so yeah, I've already done pretty much all that. But again, um, dude, if you want to take a crack at it, my uh, as long as uh, Sean's cool with it, um, uh, yeah, it is all yours. Uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. 661 is here. What's up, 661? Uh, right... Um, Pixel Pusher saying, holy shit, gyro low pass filter too high at 750. Um, Pixel Pusher, the, the gyro uh, filters do pretty much nothing. Um, nowadays with RPM filtering, uh, properly tuned RPM filtering and dynamic notch filtering, um, you really don't need any gyro filters. Uh, Mark Spatz has a video on it. Krunk's been doing it for the entire time I've known him. Um, so yeah, gyro, uh, the, the gyro filters are pretty much useless. I, I, I think you're going to really start to see them get phased out moving forward. Uh, the beginning FPV says, to me it sounds like a bearing in one of the motors maybe. Nope, motors are perfectly clean. Uh, one of the very first things I always do when troubleshooting is plug it into Betaflight, take the props off and spin the motors up uh, in, in individually in each motor tab and you just nice and slowly spin them all the way up and that'll find stuff like that. That'll find uh, bent uh, motor shafts and it'll find uh, ruined uh, bearings. Um, what else do we have? Okay, we're good. Cool. Uh, nah, you're not talking shit, Crunked. It, it's less work for me, man. <laughs> um, those M2s are great. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had, like, weirdly decent luck with these little M2s. Um, the, and the M3 ones, to be honest. Again, only when... Um, only when I absolutely have to do I use these um, because I just I don't love that they don't move up and down um, but yeah they're uh, when I've had to use them they've actually worked uh, right uh, license to drive says put a three axis gimbal cost two fit wait put a three axis gimbal that costs 250 on a 40 dollar bank hood <laughs> Forward drive RC car today. Gimbal was holding an AIO FPV camera. It was almost like driving with real time real steady. That's pretty cool license. Um, if you don't already follow Gapit uh, from the FPV show, uh, he now works with. 
is it Beverly Hills Aerials? I think he works for uh, Beverly Hills Aerials, and they've been making a bunch of those. They've been making a bunch of RC cars uh, with really nice uh, three axis gimbals on them to get really low angle shoots. Um, so, yeah. Tiago, that's a really good call. Could be a bad gyro. The debug could detect it. That is a. Um, that is an excellent little. You know, I so I haven't done that yet. Have 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 one of you guys done that before? I think, I think I'll just see the number jump up. But um, that is a really good call. So if you guys don't know, I bet you a lot of people don't know about this so much so that I'm gonna zoom in on it. All right. Uh, in case you guys don't know, in even if you don't have black box, you can still use this black box debug mode. Um, so if I go, so usually I'll put this black box debug mode on gyro filtered because that's a good data set for doing black box logging with. This flight controller doesn't have black box, so you would think, well, why the fuck would you want to do this? It's because you can turn an OSD feature on that will, in some of these cases, it'll, it'll give you some values. Um, I'm not sure which one to um, which one to turn on though. You think it's gyro scale? Tiago, have, um, if anybody gyro scaled, pixel pusher says, okay, cool. Um, so I'm gonna go with gyro scaled, and so that's not it. So you gotta save and reboot to lock that in, right? Um, and then the next thing is you got to come here to the OSD and you got to put debug on the, so I guess here's your way of remembering it, right? In black box, it's called the black box debug mode in the OSD. It's called debug. So you got to turn that on and now it's, <laughs> it's kind of messy. Um, it's not kind of messy. It's, it's very messy. It's just like a bunch of nonsense, but that's okay. Um, so I'm just kind of moving it so that I can see it and we're going to save. So now the, the, um, the OSD has that in there so we can put goggles on and see if we can find anything going on. Um, it'll make a graph. Will it? it last time I did this, it was just, uh, it was just numbers. You can check the debug on beta. Wait, what? You can check the debug on beta flight. Wait, what? While you're flying? No. What? Wait. Really? Oh my god, 661, that's gnarly, no shit. Um, how can I check it on beta flight? Is it that weird uh, VTX table th uh, like you do to check the VTX version? I've never done that. I've never done that VTX version check nonsense. Um, let me just put the goggles on and uh, and see if I can see any of these numbers going bananas. Because I think that will happen if uh, if it's angry. Uh, where are the batteries? Uh, where are they? Another couple minutes here, and then I'm going to be out of here for a night, but I'll see you guys tomorrow night for sure. Uh, give me a battery, yo. Oh, my God. Where'd they all go? Um, I have batteries. They're up here. Yeah, fuck it. I'm just going to run this one again. We'll be all right. Thank you. Here. This one should be all right. It should have a little bit left in it. All right. Hey. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. All right, get this in here. Get in there, you little shit. Mm. Mm, you little shitter. All right, there we go with that. Here we go with this. Just turn this guy on. Enough. I, 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 I hear you. I understand. Low battery. I understand that you're upset, Beeper. You got a... You got a rough, bro. Um, 
God damn it. Get out of there. Little antenna. Get get over there. There we go. That'll be okay. All right, let's see what the uh, OSD has to say. See if I can see a number jumping up like crazy. No, not a metronome. It's the um it's the it's the beeper. Oh god. What's the uh what's the video channel? <laughs> What video channels is this on, Sean? Is it A1? I bet you it's A1. Hey, there's A1. All right, let me see. All right, I got those numbers. Let's see if those numbers go crazy. Uh, okay, this battery's completely dead. <laughs> Five volts total. That's not going well. This battery sucks donkeys though it's an it's a, an hv battery and they're all awful Telemetry lost. all right get this shit shack of a battery off of here eh. 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 come on come on come on come on come on come on faster faster eh. Uh, shit, I think I just flew some of these. Oh, balls. Is this a 4-cell? Yeah, it is. So I've got, I've got uh, 4S, 5S, and 6S batteries from GNB in, uh, in like 550 mAh. I'm, and I, and I have rigs that will not <laughs> be cool with, uh, with accidentally plugging in a, <laughs> a 5 or a 6S battery. So yeah, I got that going for me. So that's that's for sure going to end in uh, a fucking nightmare at some point here. Stay tuned for that one. Speed, poor, there's going to be a poor little Speedix GS, GS25 that uh, gets blown... Really? Why does everything have to... Can you... I just need this to go... I... Okay, you're lost. You're, you're, you're lost, and it's hard, I know. It's a tough life. Very tough life. All right, let's, let's actually try this. I mean, all the numbers are kind of moving around. I, I saw like as high as like negative 30. I, I don't know, man. It, it's, what am I looking for? Not flying on the bench. You can't check the uh, gyros on the bench though, can you? I guess I could. Um, we're out of time though. It's 10.00. I'm going to get out of here. Um, yeah, it's still doing it. I can hear it. It's... Um, it's an angry little guy, man. It's it's being very angry. It's being very angry. And uh How the hell would it would I check for a bad gyro on the bench? Yeah, cuz I I can't get those values without it being armed. Oh, let's take the props off. All right, last thing I'm doing, taking the props off real quick. I don't think looking at those, um, I'm good, Roscoe. How about you? Uh, I don't think that looking at those numbers is really going to do it, though. I feel like maybe I need to do the thing uh, Tiago was talking about in making it graph. But I forgot how to do that. I, I, I didn't know it could do a, a fucking a graph. Uh, looking to try to get this thing working, 6 is one <laughs> It, um, it, uh, it's got a nasty oscillation that, um, I haven't been able to find quite yet. I've, I've only probably spent, like, an hour, though, if that. Uh, alright, so let's see. This is, this ought to be interesting. So now we're looking at gyro data. in the OSD. All right, so it's armed. So now I can watch the gyro data. 
But the problem is, like, I don't necessarily know what I'm looking for, right? Like... Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. Something very important just happened. It started doing it with no props while I was holding it. And typically what that means is that it's an electrical problem. Um, I'm going to let you guys listen. So, it should be ramping up and down, but can you hear the garbage? It's hard to hear. So, okay, so here's the yaw axis, nice and smooth, ready? Alright, here's the pitch axis. Still kind of smooth. Here's the roll axis. So, each axis sounds okay, but let's see what happens when I bring the throttle up. Oh, you hear it? It's doing it. It's oscillating right now. Oh, and the throttle comes on like a fucking light switch. That's weird. Throttle come. Whoa, those are getting hot. Uh, the throttle comes on like a light switch. That's weird. Um, Hobbywing F4. Uh, for the record, I've had issues with these Hobbywing F4s before. Wow. There's something really going on here. Watch what I'm doing on the on the transmitter to make it react like that. Ready? Watch this. It's uh yeah, it's super upset. Uh okay, I think it's an electrical thing now. Um, which makes sense. We've gotten a lot of the, um, I can't do that Mustang. It's not mine. <laughs> and that's an insane idea. The fix is, the fix is here. We just need to find it. Hey. Um, all right. Well, there you guys go. That's, uh, a good chunk of the, the troubleshooting that I do when a rig starts to act like an asshole. Um, this one, uh, yeah, I think there's something weird going on electronically. I think, I think it's an electrical noise issue. Uh, and those, those problems are a bitch to find because it could literally be that the VTX is too, too close for some reason to the, I mean, there's a huge gap in there. I mean, like, look at the size of the gap in there. I could fucking... I could fly another quad through the gap between the flight controller and the ESC, um, but we don't run shielded cables. We don't like nothing is shielded. Nothing, these the way that we build these things. It's a, it's a wonder that they work at all. Um, so yeah, I'm going to next step is just going to be to think more right now. Just to think more about um, what the electrical problem probably is. Uh, and yeah, I'll take it from there. I think that's it. Uh, I'm going to go eat. I'm starving. You guys are awesome. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. Wait, wait. Uh, Frank says, check gyro. Do numbers change when quad is sitting on the bench? They don't. Um, we're going to do, we're, I'm going to look at the gyro some more though. Uh, Tiago says the, the, the good gyro, the good gyro, the values almost don't. When the gyro is bad, it goes banana for a second or two. Well, you know, what I'll do, since I haven't done that test before using the gyro debug in the OSD, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a known good rig uh, with those values in the OSD, and I'm going to sit here and screw around with it to see how high the numbers go, um, and then I'll plug this guy in to see if the numbers are going extra high. Uh, and then Frank says, check Bluely settings, timing, frequency, um, uh, so this is BL Heli S. So there's really no, there's nothing in BL Heli that uh, that I can really check. Uh, and then Roscoe with the last uh, comment of the 
street. Wow, my brain just broke. It just broke. Bah. Bah. I'm having a similar issue with my new Blackbird 2207 2800 kV. All I did was swap motors, and now I have that issue. Um, yeah, motors, mo uh, notchy motors can cause issues. Uh, I know that Blackbird flies really high powered stuff, so. If those motors are notchy, Rusty, you got here just in time for me to end. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it could it could also be because his motors are making more power. Uh, Roscoe, do this. Drop your P and your D gains down by 20. Don't do anything else. Um, drop it. Yeah, do that. And then uh, I bet you the problem will go away. Now your tune is going to feel like shit. But it'll at least um, get you going. Uh, motor screws not touching. Now I've I've kind of checked all of the the basic things on that rig. I spent like an hour or so the other night. Um, so yeah, I think it's something electrical. I'll troubleshoot some more tomorrow. Maybe I'll stream and show you guys. Probably not because I'm talking tomorrow night uh, or streaming tomorrow night. Uh, that's all I got. Be good. I'm gonna go eat. I'll see you guys tomorrow night at ten o'clock. Uh, check click. Uh, things, if you haven't watched the things, Alright, everybody. I'll see you guys tomorrow night at 10 o'clock. Goodbye!